Hello students, how are you? How is your study? I hope you are doing well. Students, today I am going to teach you 10 standard second language English prose number 3, Gentlemen of Rio and Medio. Before going to start the lesson, I want to tell you a few things about the lesson. The lesson tells us that the human relation with land and human relation with his descendants. Before going to start the lesson, we have to know a brief information about the author of the lesson, Juan A. A. Sedillo. So, this is the image of Juan A. A. Sedillo. Here we have a brief information about Juan A. A. Sedillo. Juan A. A. Sedillo, 1902 to 1982, was born in Mexico. He worked as a lawyer and held public office. He wrote about Mexico and southwestern United States. The story is based on an actual legal case. So, this is the story based on actual legal case. Yes, let us see the map of USA, the incident which happened in United States of America in the state of New Mexico. So, this is the particular place Santa Fe, the city which is uh, the actual story has taken place. Before going to start the lesson, you have a video clipping, watch the video clipping, then afterwards we will discuss. Hi dad. Hi son. Dad, I need some money. Money? Why do you need the money? I want to buy a car. Sorry, I have no money right now. So, why don't we sell our land? Hmm, no, I don't agree with you. Why? It's inherited from my ancestors. So what? It's my prized possession. But I need a car now. You can arrange the money somewhere else. Why don't you sell this piece of your land? Because we let it to our descendants. Then what's the use of that? Our next generation will remember us. Is it so? They'll look after these trees. Oh, really sorry. I never thought so. It's okay. I'll be happy. Okay, how was the video clipping? Did you enjoy? Okay, let's move on to the next part. Students, uh, this is the image of Don Anselmo, the hero of this lesson. Before going to know about him and his principles, first we have to read the text. Okay, let's read the text. It took months of negotiation to come to an understanding with the old man. He was in no hurry. What he had the most of was time. He lived up in Rio and Medio, where his people had been for hundreds of years. He tilled the same land they had tilled. His house was small and wretched, but quaint. The little creek ran through his land. His orchard was narrowed and beautiful. The day of the sale, he came into the office. His coat was old, green and faded. I thought of Senator Catron, who has been such a par with these people up there in the mountains. Perhaps it was one of his old Prince Alberts. He wore gloves. They were old and torn and his fingertips showed through them. He carried a cane, but it was only the skeleton of worn out umbrella. Behind him walked one of his innumerable kin, a dark young man with eyes like a gazelle. The old man bowed to all of us in the room. Then he removed his hat and gloves slowly and carefully. Chaplin once did that in a picture 
in a bank he was the janitor then he handed his things to the boy who stood obediently behind the old man's chair there was a great deal of conversation about rain and his family he was very proud of his large family finally we got down to business yes he would sell as he had agreed for $1200 in cash we would buy and the money was ready don anselmo i said to him in spanish we have made a discovery you remember that we sent that surveyor that engineer up there to survey your land so as to make the deed well he finds that you own more than 8 acres he tells us that your land extends across the river and that you own almost twice as much as you thought he didn't know that and now don anselmo i added these americans are buna gent they are good people and they are willing to pay you for the additional land as well at the same rate per acre so that instead of 1200 dollars you will get almost twice as much and the money is here for you the old man hung his head for a moment in thought then he stood up and stared at me friend he said i don't like to have you speak to me in that manner i kept still and let him have his say i know these americans are good people and that is why i have agreed to sell to them but i do not care to be insulted i have agreed to sell my house and land for 1200 dollars and that is the price i argued with him but it was useless finally he signed the deed and took the money but refused to take more than the amount agreed upon then he shook hands all around put on his ragged gloves took his stick and walked out with the boy behind him okay dear students i hope you observed my reading let's move on to the glossary and usage of this lesson let's know the meaning of the word negotiation which means official discussion the usage of the word is a negotiation was held in 2014 between some poland senators and foreign delegates so this is the image of the poland senators with foreign delegates the negotiation the next word wretched which means unpleasant or not attractive the usage of the word is my wretched car has broken down again so wretched means unpleasant which means halagir halagirvantaha okay quaint the meaning of the word unusual and attractive especially in an old fashioned way we can see don anselmo's house was quaint it was unusual and attractive and it is uh, in an old fashioned way another word narrowed which means a branch of a tree with twisted hard lumps the usage of the word is we can see many narrowed trees beside the state highway you can see uh, the image that branches and lumps of the trees are twisted which means they are not properly maintained every year so creek which mean a small narrow stream or river a small narrow stream kannadalli jhari anta karitivi athwa tore anta karitivi the usage of the word is a little creek runs through my land another word orchard 
a piece of land in which fruit trees are grown fruit garden okay orchard which means a piece of land in which fruit trees are grown prince albert's long double breasted coat gazelle a type of small deer which has large beautiful eyes uh, this is the image of gazelle just you can observe the eyes of the gazelle which is a large beautiful eyes so here is a comparison made between the two uh, one is a dark young man another one is a gazelle the eyes of both a dark young man and a gazelle are compared a dark young man with eyes like a gazelle so like the word like has used to compare these two things so this is called simile in kannada upamalankara so charlie chaplin 1889 to 1977 silent film comedian so uh, the author introduced this character charlie chaplin's uh, film one of his film in the film bank charlie chaplin greeted the people by removing his hat so the same action has made by don anselmo when he greeted the people when he entered into the office so janitor someone whose job is to look after a school or a large building so janitor mean so look after the school or large building senator catron this is the picture of senator catron he is a senator so kannadalli ಸಂಸತ್ ಸದಸ್ಯ ಅಂತ ಕ ನಮ್ಮ ದೇಶದಲ್ಲಿ ಕರಿತೀವಿ ಸೊ ಇನ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ವೇ ಇನ್ ಅಮೆರಿಕಾ ಸೆನೇಟರ್ ಈಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ದ ರೆಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟೇಟಿವ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಮೆರಿಕನ್ ಸೆನೇಟ್ ಸೊ ಥಾಮಸ್ ಬೆಂಟನ್ ಕ್ಯಾಟ್ರನ್ ಎ ಸೆನೇಟರ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ನ್ಯೂ ಮೆಕ್ಸಿಕೋ ಫ್ರಮ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಟ್ವೆಲ್ ಟು ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಸೆವೆಂಟೀನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಮ್ಯಾಪ್ ಆಫ್ ನ್ಯೂ ಮೆಕ್ಸಿಕೋ ಸೊ ಡಾನ್ ವಿಚ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಸ್ಪ್ಯಾನಿಷ್ ಟೈಟಲ್ ಆಫ್ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ much like sir in english buena gente good people it is a spanish word the english meaning is good people deed agreement so cane the usually the old people are uh, use the cane to walk for support so let's move on to the vocabulary one word substitution a sentence or a group of words has to be replaced with a single word it is called one word substitution we can also call this which is reverse to the meaning of word so word followed by the meaning it is mean new words meaning so opposite of that one word substitution let's see the first example a branch of a tree with twisted hard limbs this is a phrase given we are going to select a word suitable word equivalent meaning to these phrases so narrowed the unusual and attractive especially in an old fashioned way quaint so don anselmo's house was quaint but attractive someone whose job is to look after a school or a large building so janitor a type of small deer which has large beautiful eyes gazelle look for the words in the word maze which match with the given meaning the number given in the brackets is the number of letters in that word so look at the word maze you are going to find out the word 
the phrase is a long thin stick the four letter word you are going to find out in this word maze which means cane a long thin stick is cane finding something that was not known earlier find out the nine letter word in the word grid discovery thing or things that someone owns the word has eight letters property a place where fruit trees are grown the, the word has seven letters orchard the word is orchard let us move on to the next part comprehension part the first question is how did the old man greet the people who had been waiting for him the old man bowed to all of them in the room then he removed his hat and gloves slowly and carefully describe the old man's orchard the old man's house was small and wretched but quaint a little creek ran through his land his orchard was narrowed and beautiful so let's see the picture you can see the orchard a little creek ran through the orchard we can see a small house we, and also many narrow trees are seen in this picture the storyteller offered the old man almost the double of what he had quoted earlier why because he sent a surveyor to survey the old man's land he discovered that don anselmo owned more than 8 acres of land so he offered double of what he had quoted earlier students look at the picture of the old man don anselmo and draw your inference about the appearance of old man and his social living condition did you get anything let's move on to the answer his coat was green old and faded he carried a cane which was not actually cane but it was only the skeleton of a worn out umbrella he wore gloves they were old and torn okay so what do you understand from this the old man's condition and his socio economic condition he was not a rich man but he was a principled man the old man agreed to sell the land for how much dollar 1200 dollars let's move on to the grammar section learn grammar through communication so if clause a conditional clause that state a hypothesis or condition real or imagined situation hypothesis means who he athwa kalpanegalu so when we are using such uh, hypothesis conditions or imagined situation we use if clauses so let's move on to the first conditional clause it is possible to fulfill conditions or open condition or we can call it as type 1 condition so first part generally if clause and the next one main clause in the first clause we can see simple present tense in the main clause we can see subject and the model auxiliary will and verb one let's see the example if i am not busy i will help you dependent clause if i am not busy it is a dependent clause i will help you is the main clause 
So, in the if class we can see simple present tense and in the main class will and base form help is given. In the second example, if you work hard you will win the prize. So, again in the if class work the base verb or simple present verb is given in the main class will plus v 1 form win is given. Okay, let, let us observe it. What is the purpose of this using first conditional clause? It is possible to fulfill the condition means if I am not busy, I will help you. So, it may possible in future. Okay. It is quite possible in future. The condition is possible to fulfill second conditional clause it is theoretically possible to fulfill conditions. So, theoretically possible which means Atwa asambhava anta kannada dal kariti improbable condition asambhava vada sandarbha. So, it is theoretically possible to fulfill condition, but we cannot go to the past. So, improbable condition or type 2 condition. In this type of sentences in the if class the past verb or simple past verb given or past simple or simple past. So, V2 form given in the if class. In the main class, we can see would plus V verb 1 or would plus you can say a base verb. Let us uh, see the example and uh, analyze the sentence. If I won the lottery, I would buy a car. So, just look at the example. If I won the lottery, I would buy a car. Is it possible to won the lottery, go back to the past and uh, again go back to buy a car? Is it possible? No. Why? We cannot create past. We can go to future or we can do the things in present, but we cannot go to past so that it is theoretically possible but improbable means asambhava. It is only for theoretically possible and improbable situation. I, if I won the lottery, I would buy a car. Second example, let us go and see the second example. If I needed help, I would ask you. So, it is also the same condition. The verb which tells or which express the simple past and also main class I would ask you, we cannot go for go to past to fulfill this type of condition, it is only theoretically possible. Okay, next one students, the third type of if clauses or condition type condition type 3 or third conditional clauses. So, let us see the definition, it is impossible to fulfill express or complaints, we can um, use this type of sentences to express regret, we can use uh, such type of sentences to express the complaint and imaginary situations, it is impossible to fulfill the situation or condition. So, these type of sentences if clauses are called third type or condition type 3. So, just look at the structure of the classes. So, in the dependent class, we have only past perfect and a past perfect and past participle. In the main class, we can see subject plus would plus have plus past participle. Let us go and see the first example. In the first example, if you had studied hard, so had past perfect, studied past participle, uh, this is in uh, dependent class. In the next class or main class, you would have passed the exam, so would have passed. So, model auxiliary would plus have passed is PP form, past participle form given in the independent class. So, 
it is impossible to fulfill just to see just to understand this uh, this uh, statement if you had studied hard you would have passed the exam nin chenna godididre nin exam pass aagtide what is the result so you are not passed in the examination okay it is impossible to fulfill or you may say you make uh, the tone of the sentence is uh, maybe express complaint okay or um, impossible to fulfill let's move on to the next uh, uh, sentence if he had talked to me i would have listened to him here the independent class i would have listened to him in this uh, independent class would plus have plus listened pp form given in the independent class in the dependent class had again past uh, perfect and talked past participle is given so just uh, understand the sentence if he had talked to me i would have listened to him the tone is just like complaining the third uh, example if she had saved money she would have bought a bicycle so again past perfect plus past participle in uh, dependent class and in independent class would plus have plus past participle is given so just you understand that one if she had saved money it's just like complaining if she had saved money she would have bought a bicycle so avlu anavana ulislilla hagagi bicycle anna purchase madakkagilla so this uh, type of sentences or if clauses we can use to uh, express impossible conditions or impossible express complaints or regret or imaginary situations okay dear students let's move on to the last part of the lesson home assignment let's go and see the first question why do you think the storyteller spoke spanish describe the old man's orchard the third question what was the reaction of the old man to the storyteller's offer give one word for spanish title of respect much like sir in english thank you all students i hope you enjoyed the class before going to stop this class i want to give uh, information that please open your textbook and open the page number 45 on the top of the page you have a qr code please scan this qr code and you will get notes the videos which related to this unit okay thank you all